Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about Human Genome Project. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. So, what is the aim of Human Genome Project? So, it was to find out the complete DNA sequence of human genome. Now, what is genome actually? So, genome means the entire set of DNA found in cell. Now, in humans, the genome consists of 23 pairs of chromosomes. located in the cell's nucleus so that is genome okay now it was coordinated by the u.s department of energy and the national institute of health and the welcome trust of uk became a major partner of this project china japan germany and france also contributed in this project. Now, HGP was a mega project. So, why it is mega project? There are different reasons. First, HGP was launched in the year 1990 and it was a 13-year project. That means, 1990 to 2003 so it took 13 years to complete the project in fact the sequencing of chromosome 1 was completed in may 2006 so it, it is the largest chromosome in our cell and it took time to complete the sequence of chromosome 1 and the human genome is 3 into 10 to the power 9 best pair. The thing is that the cost of sequencing is US dollar 3 per best pair. So you can find the total cost. It was 9 billion US dollars. Right? 3 into 3 into 10 to the power 9. So it is the 9 billion US dollars. And do you know, if we store the information of the human genome in books, we need 3,300 books. And each book requires 100 pages. And each page requires 100 letters. So, this was one more reason that it is the mega project. And AGP led to the growth of bioinformatics. So, actually, it generated huge information, and it is not possible to analyze that much of information manually. Hence, to analyze those sequences and to store them, computational techniques are highly needed, and bioinformatics was the solution. So, these are the reasons why we call it a mega project. Now, let's see the goals of HGP. So, the first goal was to identify 20,000 to 25,000 genes. Second, to determine sequence of 3 billion best pairs. Third, to store this information in databases. Fourth, to improve tools for data analysis. Fifth, to transfer related technologies to other sectors such as industries. And then, to address ethical, legal and social issues. Actually, when we work on human gene, there might be some social or ethical or legal issues coming on the way. 
taking care of them was an important task. Now let's see the methodology. So in this project, two different methods are used. First one is expressed sequence tags or ESTs and second one is the sequence annotation. So first one is expressed sequence tags. To sequence only genes that are expressed as RNA. Because entire DNA sequence doesn't get transcribed and doesn't make proteins, right? Only genes do that. So here only genes were sequenced, not the other portions. And in this, that is in sequence annotation, they sequenced entire DNA and then they identified the functions of the genes. Okay, let's see the process. So first, the DNA from the cell was isolated. The entire DNA from the cell was isolated first. Then, the DNA was split into small fragments by using restriction endonucleases enzymes. Because the DNA is huge, right? So it was required to break down the DNA into smaller fragments. So these fragments were then cloned and then amplified with the help of a vector such as back and yuck. So this is the purpose of cloning, right? To amplify the gene. Okay. And then the fragments were sequenced by using the DNA sequencers. These DNA sequencers were actually developed by Frederick Sanger. And you know that Frederick Sanger also developed the method for determining amino acid sequences in proteins. Okay. And then the sequences were arranged based on the overlapping regions. And all the information of this genome sequence was then stored in a computer-based program. So genome mapping was the next goal which was achieved with the help of restriction endonuclease recognition sites and microsatellites. So after the completion of human genome project, they thought to map the whole genome. And it was done actually. So they used microsatellites and they used restriction endonuclease recognition sites and in this way they could map the whole genome. So this is actually not the exact part of the human genome project. It came later after completion of human genome project. So you can see this picture. Here the cell is first isolated from this girl and then from the cell the chromosome is isolated and then the DNA sequence is done and the sequence was stored in the computer. So this is the actual process of AGP. Now what are the features of human genome? So what we got from this human genome project? What are the outcome? So first is the human genome contains 3164.7 million best pair. That is approximately 3 billion best pair. And the size of a gene, that is the size of an average gene, we can say 3000 bases. And the largest gene is dystrophin, that is 2.4 million bases. Its size is huge, right? 2.4 million bases. And the total number of genes we got only 30,000. 
Previously, it was estimated that the total number of genes could be 80,000 to 1,40,000. But no, it was only 30,000 that we could get after the Human Genome Project. And the 99.9% .9 nucleotides are same in all people. And functions are unknown for 50% of discovered genes. So we don't know the function of 50% of the discovered genes. And less than 2% of genome codes for proteins. That means 98% DNA contains junk. That means the repeated sequences. So repeated sequences form a large portion of human genome. Repetitive sequences are repeated 100 to 1000 times. And they have no coding functions that we know. Because repetitive sequences are not getting transcribed. So what's their use? So they actually act on chromosome structure, its dynamics and the evolution. And chromosome 1 has most genes because it is largest chromosome. It contains 2968 genes. And chromosome Y is the smallest chromosome. It has only 231 genes and 1.4 million SNPs that is a single nucleotide polymorphism occur in human genome. And lastly, what is the application of human genome project? So knowledge about DNA variations among individuals lead to new ways to diagnose and treat human diseases. So actually today, if any disease arises due to some alteration in a certain gene, then it could be detected and compared to the genome database that we already have. In this way, a better step could be taken to deal with the problem and can be fixed with more ease. And many non-human model organisms such as bacteria, yeast, C. elegans, drosophila, plants like rice, arabidopsis have also been sequenced. So this is all about today's lecture. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Thank you.